met your pastor many years ago when he was a when he was a student i think um far away and it's amazing what god does very amazing what god does this whole week is going to be very prophetic you do not know where god is going to take you but one thing you can be sure about is that god is taking you very far the next time i meet you we might meet in los angeles amen that book you're holding in your hand will take you very far i remember when we were in kakamega in 2010 when i first met him there is a song they used to sing in their fellowships because what i am going to tell you is a continuation of what i told him and what i told them way back in in kakamega 2010 they used to say i have a wonderful treasure the gift of god without measure you know and they were talking about the bible and he says we will travel together my bible and i look where the bible has brought him <laughs> Amen. This book will make you a wonder. Amen. So for a start, I want you to lift up that book. If you don't have a Bible, pretend you have a Bible, pick up your shoe, or and I want you to say these words. I, I want you to say it as if you have a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, lift up your phone or something. And if your phone does not have a Bible, it's not a phone, it's a stone. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. but lift it up by faith and i want you to say these words from your heart say this is my bible say it like you believe it say this is my bible i am what it says i am i have what it says i have i can do what it says i can do today i'll be taught the word of god i boldly confess my mind is alert my heart is receptive I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the word of God, and I will never be the same. Shout and say never never never. I will never be the same. In Jesus name. Amen. A brief history of myself. I am a village boy. <laughs> God picked me up at the age of 9 and I gave my life to Christ because Christ gave his life to for me. Amen. And when I believed Christ, he began to lead me. At 14 I had a very powerful encounter with the Holy Spirit and that is when I began to preach. At the age of 14, the rest is history. I've crisscrossed this world. I have gone to places you'd never dream of seeing a Ugandan there but God has taken me to places I have met all kinds of people I have seen all kinds of things why because God is not a man to lie I have not come to this place to tell you stories I have not I'm not a storyteller I am not a politician I am an ambassador of the gospel and I have come to tell you what God thinks about you And if you will listen to me attentively your life will never be the same again. I have come to tell you that God thinks very highly of you. Oh Jesus would not have come. Amen. So I want you to open your word. Th these words that I'm telling you I have told it to Brazilians. The words I'm going to tell you I have told them to Americans, I've told them to Canadians, I have told them to people around the world. the words i am about to tell you the words i am about to tell you have lifted cripples off their wheelchairs the words i am about to tell you have unstopped deaf ears opened blinded eyes broke people have been elevated out of poverty into prosperity the words i am going to tell you are not the words of a man these are words directly from the corridors of heaven god thinks very highly of you it doesn't matter where you are even in marsabit god can raise up giants from this place and god can take you to the place where he said you will go these words when your heart is in fellowship with god the bible becomes god's present tense living voice from heaven this is not a story book this is the voice of god it's god's present tense living voice from heaven and when god speaks he's not playing politics he says what he means 
and he means what he says. Amen? Let me say that again. When God speaks to you or to anybody or about anything, he means what he says and he says what he means. And the Bible says uh, in Titus chapter 1 that God, it is impossible for God to lie. In the book of Hebrews, the Bible says God cannot lie. If God says this building is blue or green, that's what it is. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. Amen? So, take the opinion of God. And I learned, before I opened the Bible, I learned many years ago that the secret to favor with God is never antagonize God. Say what he says. Agree with him. Don't disagree with God. That's why he will meet a weak person and he will say, let the weak say, I am strong. Agree with God. Doesn't matter how weak you feel, but let the Bible be your new text. Let it become your new mindset. Amen. I love these words. When I looked at them up here, I said, this is very prophetic. You shall know the truth and the tr truth shall liberate you. It will make you free. Amen. <sighs> I want to make an introduction. I pray that you will come back in the evening. I pray you will come back in the evening. But I'm going to be saying some very strange things. They, um, they are really biblical things. They're from the Bible. But I want you to open your heart. You have heard them. Sometimes I've watched your pastor speaking and I've been blessed by what he says. Nothing very different. But I want you to take your attention to the next level. You know people always talking about paying a price. <laughs> you must pay a price. Well, the price that you will have to pay here is the price of attention. You must pay attention. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I want you to turn with me to the book of Matthew. I know we will have, I have seven days here. We will have enough time to fellowship. But I want you to go with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 9. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 9. I know you're recording, so this is going to limit my movements. I am a crazy preacher. Sometimes I like to run around, but I may, I may find myself floating on up there. So I'll have to control myself fruit of the spirit, self-control. So I'll have to control myself. Matthew chapter 9, we're going to read the first eight verses. Let me prophesy. I saw a lot of dry river beds when I was coming. I saw a lot of poverty when I was coming. I saw a lot of misery written on people's faces. All the way from, I don't know, we crossed a certain place and I began to see it written on people's faces. Let me tell you, that is not going to be your portion. It is going to rain in your spirit. And it's going to rain out of your spirit. The words of Jesus will literally be fulfilled. Everybody under the sound of my voice, it doesn't matter whether you're watching or you're listening to me here. You are going to be the cloud out of which the rain of God is going to flow. The Bible says that he, and I would like to add, she that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his or her belly shall flow rivers of life-giving water. You are going to be the solution. Let me say this. Let me edit that. You are the solution to the cries of the humanity around you. Amen. I thought I should tell that, tell you that. Go to Matthew chapter 9. I'm going to read from verse 1. And he entered into a ship. I'm reading out of the old King James Bible. And passed over and came to his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Stop. 
the Holy Spirit is reminding me to tell you that there is a strange, beautiful car coming your way, Pastor. Amen. I'm telling you. Someone has been moved of God to give you. Don't forget my words. It is not going to take long. You are going to be driving one of the most beautiful cars in the whole of this city. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I, I don't prophesy while shaking, but I have said it. You remember these words. Okay. So behold, they brought him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go to thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. Are you following? Verse 8. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power to men. I want to read verse 8 again. But when the multitudes saw it, they marveled and they glorified God, which had given such power unto men. Sisters, don't worry about the word men. When you read it in your original, it is actually people, men and women. Amen. When the multitude saw it, they marveled and they glorified God which had given such power unto men. I am tempted to read verse 8 again. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and they glorified God which had given such power unto men. Hallelujah. Wow. Jesus meets a man, a paraplegic, lying on the bed. They brought him into the place where Jesus was. And the man was totally paralyzed, couldn't move a finger or a toe. Just like the humanity you see around you. Lots of people around the world, lots of people having problems without answers, diseases without remedies, fears without faith, guilt without pardon. I think you've seen them. People wasting in the mud, sitting, waiting, withering, dying. Yesterday we were coming here and the pastor who drove us here saw a man lying on the street. I mean, that is the picture of humanity. This guy was lying half dead. And they brought him there and Jesus did the unthinkable. You know, we read it now in 2021 and we think that was normal. Jesus did the unthinkable. Preachers used not to talk like that. Rabbis and Pharisees and Sadducees used not to talk like that. But Jesus looked at this man and he stepped out of the ordinary and he pronounced these words to the man. Son, your sins be forgiven you. And to the ordinary Jew, these words were almost, these were blasphemous. Only God forgives sins. Who do you think you are? For they thought Jesus was an ordinary man. Because he looked like any of them. Jesus used not to walk around with a halo on his head. He was like everybody else. But then... He did things that nobody thought would be done. So Jesus forgave the man. He told the man, your sins be forgiven thee. And let me tell you, if you're going to be a marvelous believer, you will have to learn to talk like Jesus. Don't talk like the people in Marsabit. Don't talk like the people in Kenya. Don't be an African. Be a Christian. Can I say that again? Don't be an African. Be a Christian. So Jesus told the man, you're forgiven. And these religious theologues rose up and they said, who does this guy think he is? Only God forgives sins. This is blasphemy. And to the Jew, if you blaspheme, they would pick up stones and they would, they would hold a rock concert in your honor. They would throw stones at you. So, Jesus is blaspheming according to them. Nobody can pronounce those words. Only God says you're forgiven. But Jesus said it. 
And so Jesus began to reason with them. He said, now tell me something. Why are those thoughts coming up in your head? I want to give you a choice. Which of these two things is easier? To say to this man, your sins are forgiven. Or to tell him, rise up and walk. Which of the two do you want me to do? But I want to prove to you that I can forgive his sins. Then he turned to the guy and he told him, rise up, take up your bed and go to your house. And the words of Jesus were not words of a politician. The disease organized itself and left his body. And the man rose up, picked up his bed and walked out like he had never been sick. And a spirit of prophecy came upon the crowd when they saw this miracle. Unprecedented miracle. A spirit of prophecy came upon them. They had never seen anything like this. The Bible says they marveled. And they gave glory to God. And then one thing, they realized that God had given such power to human beings. Are you listening to me? It was a revelation to them. That this power belongs to only God. But God has decided to give his power to human beings. And I came to my subject to say that God is willing to share his power and authority with people like you and me. Power that is openly displayed. Some people would like to perform miracles behind the scenes. But this power happened, this miracle happened in public and everybody was listening. Everybody was watching. So God is willing to share such power with human beings. Openly displayed power. This power is super, supernatural. They say the devil is mighty, but God is almighty. Amen. So this power is openly displayed power. It is super, supernatural power. This power is marvelous power. It's power to act as God would have acted in similar circumstances. This level of power that Jesus demonstrated... It's power to bring forgiveness to the humanly unforgivable. Many Jews believe that if you were suffering from such a sickness that would make you paraplegic, this, you must have committed an unforgivable sin. But Jesus shows up and tells the man you're forgiven. That is why it really offended the Jews. Because nobody forgives. This guy, who knows what he did? Who are you to forgive this guy? And Jesus assumed the place of God and he forgave the man. This is power to bring forgiveness to the humanly unforgivable. Can I stop here and say that when Jesus gave the great commission, he gave you the authority to forgive people. Did you know that? Jesus actually said, whose sins you remit are remitted and whose sins you retain are retained. You need to stretch your hands over Marsabit and say, I forgive Marsabit. This, this, this sin, <laughs> sin is what is holding many people down. Have you ever heard of a man called Kobas van Rensburg? Have you heard of that name? Have you heard of that guy? Kobas van Rensburg. He, he went to be with the Lord in 2013, 2014, 2015. On the African soil, maybe around the world, nobody had collected such crutches anywhere in the world. He was in South Africa. In his church, there is a place where they piled crutches and wheelchairs and medical, abandoned medical paraphernalia. That guy, this is how he would pray for the sick. They would bring to him people on stretchers half dead. I watched videos of that guy. This is how he would pray. He would look at a sick man and would tell him, I forgive you of your sins. And I give you life. And the man would jump out of the wheelchair. That is how Jesus told us to pray for the sick. In fact, Jesus never told anyone to pray for the sick. Did you know that? Jesus, Jesus read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Jesus never told anybody to pray for the sick. What I remember Jesus saying, Jesus said, heal the sick. 
He never said pray for the sick. Did you know that? So this guy would see a sick person and he would say, I forgive you of your sins. I saw him do that many times. I forgive you of your sins and I bring your life. And the guy would jump up. So, power to forgive the humanly. You have that authority, right? Lift up your Bible. Lift up your Bible. I want to remind you, say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do what it says I can do. Never forget those words. So lift up your hand and put it on your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I forgive you of all your sins. Now, if you can, if you can do that for a person, you can do it to your neighborhood. You can forgive Kenya. You can forgive Africa. <laughs> Pastor Joseph, where did you bring this crazy guy from? <laughs> Power to heal the humanly incurable. Power to deliver the diabolically oppressed. God has given such power to human beings. No, God is not going to give you that power after you fast for 120 days. He has given the power to such, such power to human beings. Power to heal, power to deliver, power to set free, power to prosper, power to forgive people. God, Matthew chapter 9 verse 8. They glorified God who had given such power to men. Amen. Now, I want to say this. God is the ultimate giver. I want you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. God is the ultimate giver. Ephesians chapter 4. Thank God it is in your Bible. Ephesians chapter 4. The Bible is not written to some bishop or to some apostle somewhere. It's written to you. Chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Listen very attentively. But unto every one of us, who is us? Who is us? It's you and me, right? But unto us, every one of us, is given grace. Is given grace. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. Mm. Wherefore, he says, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto men. God is the ultimate giver. The Bible says, unto every one of us is given grace. And the Bible says when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts. Gifts, listen, these gifts he's talking about are not chocolates and wristwatches and shoes. These are supernatural abilities. Superhuman. He gave gifts to you. And to everyone who is among us is given grace. Never forget those words. He's given. He's not planning to give. He ha God is the ultimate giver. He has given grace. He has given gifts. These are supernatural enablements. Amen. And then I want you to look at Acts chapter 1 verse 8. A very familiar portion of scriptures. Did you find Acts chapter 1 verse 8? But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and all Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Jesus was speaking to his disciples just before he went to heaven, before he ascended to heaven. He had been speaking to them in fact, from verse 4, he had been talking about the promise of the Father. He said that you need to tarry in Jerusalem and wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit 
because when the Holy Spirit comes you are going to be given power you shall receive power it is a promise he was making to them he told them power is coming the Holy Spirit is coming supernatural ability is coming power to make things happen power to create changes in people's lives power is coming he made a promise in chapter 1 verse 8 and then I want you to jump over to Acts chapter 19. There is a reason I'm reading these things. This not I'm not just I'm just just wasting your time. Acts chapter 19. Thank you Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 19 verse 1 and verse 2. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Open your eyes and look at me. Jesus made a promise in Acts chapter 1 verse 4 all the way to 8 where we read. He made a promise. I'm going to send you the promise of the Father. The Holy Spirit is coming. This comforter, this counselor, this helper, this advocate, this strengthener, this intercessor, this standby. He's coming. The Holy Spirit is coming and they're waiting. Did you know that in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 Jesus fulfilled the promise did you notice that when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all in one place with one accord and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house where they were sitting and suddenly there appeared unto them divided cloven tongues like as of fire which sat on everybody's head. And they were filled with whatever filled the room. They were filled with the spirit and they began to speak in other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. You following? The Holy Spirit was promised in Acts chapter 1 verse 4 to 8. He was given. Jesus fulfilled his promise. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Acts chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Paul arrives in a place called Ephesus and he asks these people, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they say, we have never heard of any Holy Ghost. But the promise was made in Acts chapter 1. The promise was fulfilled in Acts chapter 2. And in Acts chapter 19, there are people who have not even heard there is any Holy Ghost anywhere. I have been saying that God is the ultimate giver. The question is, are you an ultimate receiver? In Matthew chapter 8, uh, chapter 9, the Bible says that God has given such power to men. The question is, have you received what God has given? The Bible says God has given us grace. Grace and gifts. The question is, have you received what God has given? The power to cast out devils. The power to heal the sick. The power to forgive the humanly unforgivable. God has given. Have you received? The provisions of the New Testament. The provisions of redemption. The results of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Written about in the New Testament. Are written in the past tense. Did you notice that? Let me come back here. If you are praying these two kinds of prayers, you are wasting time. Number one, if you're asking God to give you what he has already given. Number two, if you're asking him to do what he told you to do. And if you realize it, many Christians around the world spend 
all their life praying these two kinds of prayers and God will never answer those prayers asking God to do what he has already done number two asking God to do what he told us to do he will never answer God has already said listen this is what the New Testament sounds like this is what the New Testament sounds like he has healed us by his stripes you were healed he has raised us he has anointed us he has accepted us. It's all in the past tense. He has given us. He is not going to give. He is not planning to heal you. <laughs> For you to ask God to do what he has already done. And he has already done it. Are you listening to me? Have you received what he has given? There is power available. There is grace available. You can shake my Sabbath. And you can shake every country around you. Amen. You can do what God says you can do. He has given such power to men. Have you received that power? There are some people scattered all over the Bible who believe the word of God. And they took God at his word. And they did the humanly unthinkable. Are you listening to me? Praise God. These men, there are some human beings I read about in the Bible. And they did crazy things because they simply believed what God had spoken to them. These human beings, God, they used the power of God with recklessness. I, I feel like speaking in other tongues, but you will not understand them. <laughs> they had access to that power. They had access to that authority. Moses, a man, divided the ocean. No, it is not God who divided the ocean. Moses was crying, and the children of Israel were crying. The Egyptians were coming, and there was a Red Sea before them. They could not run to the left because there was a mountain. They could not run to the right because there was a mountain. And this is the best time to pray. And so Moses fell on his knees and cried out to God. Read Exodus 14. The Bible says God asked Moses a question. Why are you crying to me? Stretch your hand over the sea and divide it. Those are not my words. Moses, stop crying to me. Stretch your hand over the sea and divide it. So Moses divided the Red Sea. A human being. God has given such power to human beings. Joshua did not stop the sun. Joshua did not stop the moon. You and I know by scientific evidence now that the sun does not move. Did you know that? It is the earth which moves around the sun. Okay? And then we discovered that if the earth is on which stopped really when Joshua commanded, if the earth had stopped, you know that there would have been a cataclysmic accident. You know that? Because it is, we are not alone here. We have Jupiter. We have Venus. We have Mercury. We have Pluto. We have Mars. We have, and you know Jupiter has like seven moons or something. We have a moon. We have all kinds of things going around the sun. You know it's called the solar system. So when Joshua said stop, everything stopped. It is not the sun which stopped. The man stopped the universe. For a whole day, the Bible says no human being had ever done that. Men received the power of God. In fact, the Bible says no human being has ever done such a thing. Joshua stopped the solar system. They marveled and glorified God which had given such power to men. Elijah, if you read the King James Bible, prayed 67 words and fire came out of the ionosphere and burnt up the sacrifice. Many people are praying for 40 days and they cannot even move a fly. 
Elijah prayed 67 words and scorched the sacrifice. Plus the stones and the water licked up everything. A human being. Elisha, with one prophetic pronouncement. In fact, God did not speak to him. He opened his mouth and he spoke. And he altered the economy of Israel in 24 hours. A man. A man. A human being. God has given such power to human beings. Praise God. I'm trying to control myself. Jesus as a man walked on water and he multiplied scarce resources and he fed a multitude. Peter, a human being, raised the dead and he walked out of prison doors, locked metallic prison doors and Peter walked out of them. Philip, Philip, I want to talk to these spiritual warfare experts about Philip. Philip walked into a city. He was not Philip the apostle. He was Philip the deacon. He walked into Samaria and he did not do spiritual mapping. He was running for his life. They had just killed Stephen. And Philip ran there. He did not have a King James Bible. He walked into the devil's territory, the biggest witch who lived in that place. A sorcerer of sorcerers. And Philip walked right into the jaws of the devil. And he did not see a church there. He said, this must be a good place to begin what we were doing back in Jerusalem. Without a choir, without ushers, without protocol, without bodyguards. He walked in there without a Bible. He did not have a choir singing songs. Listen, Philip walked into that place. And he began casting out devils. He began healing the sick. Until the big, you see, the witch doctor had covered the whole place with his demonic influence. There were so many devils that everybody who was sick in that place was under the spell of that man. The Bible says he had bewitched the whole of Samaria. You remember Simon the witch, the sorcerer? And Philip walked in there and he did not even say, ah, let me do spiritual mapping here. He just walked in there with one story called the gospel. He preached Christ unto them and devils began to run and joy came into the city. The depression lifted, the confusion, the, the spell, just with a story about Jesus. You don't need all the things this generation is talking about. The gospel does not have power. The gospel is the power of God. Paul, the Bible says, as poor, yet making many rich. 2 Corinthians 6.10 Paul made poor people rich. Stephen healed the sick. God has given such power to human beings. I came to stir you up in Masabit that you're not an ordinary person. God has given such power to men. Amen. Elisha opened barren wombs. Samson pushed down a city wall. He carried the gate for 50 miles up a mountain. He plucked up the gate. No, it was not the gate of a house. The gate of the city. He plucked it up with his hands and he walked up a mountain for 50 kilometers. I counted them. David killed a lion and a bear and a giant. And Mary gave birth to a wonder. Human beings doing supernatural things. This power was given. Question, have you and you and you and you, have you received? God has given. God is a lavish giver. God is a generous giver. God is an... He gives until the psalmist cries out, Lord, stop. You anoint my head with oil. My cup is running over. God does not know the word enough. He gives until his... God is a gift. Have you received? Have you received? Question, have you? In Masabit, you don't
don't need a multitude here. You by yourself, you can shake this whole county and this country. Have you received? Have you received? I feel the power of God right now, but have you received? Ah! And what are you going to do about it? If it worked for Jesus, it should work in you. I want to say it again. If it worked in Jesus, it should work in you. Amen. If that power worked in Jesus, it should work in you. Amen. Have you ever read John chapter 14 verse 12? Verily, verily, I say unto you, the person that believes in me, the works that I do shall he and she do also. And greater than this shall he do. There is no Greek and Hebrew to this. It's just what he said. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works and the miracles that I do, shall he or she do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall demand in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Again, I say unto you, if you shall demand for anything in my name, I will do it. That word ask was translated from a Greek word, aiteo, which means a demand for something due. When Peter stood at the beautiful gate and found this man whose legs were twisted like rubber bands, could not, could not walk for 40 years, Peter did not pray. He said, silver and gold I have none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That is what Peter gave him. He asked, he demanded. He was not begging. Brothers and sisters, you are not an ordinary person. And beginning this evening, I am going to tell you who you are. I just wanted to stir you up. I just wanted to inform you that there is something about you. That if you wake up to yourself, somebody in Masapit is going to believe my story. Somebody in this county is going to believe what I'm saying. I have been going around the world telling people these things. And things, somebody is going to wake up and believe these stories. Amen. Stand up on your feet. If you have not received what God has given. And you know, I just told you the tip of the iceberg. If you open the Bible right from the beginning to the end. God is a giver. God has given. None of us is permitted to be broke. None of us is permitted to fail in this life. Jesus did not die for nothing. The Holy Spirit did not come for nothing. Something is going to happen to you this week. There are things on the inside of you that we are going to unlock and your life will never be the same. How many of you are not afraid to speak in tongues this morning? Lift up your hands. I want you to open your mouth and, and just thank God for his word. And I want you to receive what he's imparted to you right now. In the name of Jesus. Lu brava do sheke bahaya. Shanta kaba ro baradi. Lu tanda baka kaba soto nae. Munta bate soto ko bravia. Shita lo de briko soto namanda. Imago rasete kasete. Your word is having free course in my Sabbath. Somebody is going to believe this word. Somebody is going to receive this this word somebody is going to walk into their healing into their season somebody is walking into supernatural power somebody is making a discovery of the anointing that you have already imparted you are the ultimate giver father lado soto koba batai liko toto radiba sati jakata la banda reka bayo rusate keda monda la baye monda kosa prake batai suto la brava tate goda jite Oh, Bakaya, Santa Lamando Labata, Libro to Sondekai, Nitando Ricabaya, Neteco Suta Leba, never has been in the mighty name of Jesus. Libri to Suta Naba, my God, my God, my God, my God, Libra da Zata 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 Take one more minute, just lift up your hands and speak in other tongues. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, and if I have himself, receive which God has given. Ribanda soto soto da rebeke, ribonda la 
Open your heart and receive everything God has given. Zike boyata, zike boyata kaba, zike boraki masotaba, zike borate le banda kaba. My God, my God, my God. Zile kota marada yaba, zikota kaba yaba. We receive that which belongs to us. We receive that which you have given. We receive mando kasi protese te kasi. Everybody, listen, you are walking out of this place different than you walked in. There is power on your life, there is supernatural favor on your life. You are not an ordinary person. Are you listening to me? Something different about you. I want you to be conscious of that, and I want you to become the biggest receiver God has given. God has given. I have showed you from the scriptures. God has given. Now you need to become the ultimate receiver. Amen. And you need to learn what to do with what has given, what God has given. Have you been blessed this morning? Tell somebody not to miss the evening session. I have some things to tell you. Pastor Joseph, it's such an honor. God bless you, sir. We can appreciate him. I come down. In Jesus' name.